Yeah. For the final? Is it all the chat? All the chat? That we've done, yes. Okay. And you don't have any questions? I don't know yet off the top of my head. I haven't looked yet. Okay. So, just so you guys know, a couple things. First of all, um, C's candy is due tomorrow. Okay? So, make sure you get that into Joy tomorrow. All right? We really can't take it late because we've got a deadline to get it ordered and get it to get it here quickly next week. We'll order hers and we can collect. Okay? Because if we can't, if we can't, we can always resell it. Okay? Just make sure you we make note of that on there. Okay? All right, um, so make sure you guys get turned into joy, all right? Shh, you're listening. Um, my plan is to try to get through section 9-6 before the final, okay? Because if we can do that, then we're good to go. My other plan is that I will be here next Monday and the Monday after, okay, for extra time and Monday night, okay? I'm not planning on staying today. I didn't think anybody would come today, so... Yes, Joaquin. Are we going to test before today? the final? No. Okay. So we're not taking any more tests. We're just going to put it on the final exam. Okay. Depending upon how I we're doing next week, I may give like a big quiz. Okay, but not a test. Wait, hold on. A big quiz is a test. No. Like five questions, maybe six or seven, maybe. Okay. Not not like a tw twelve to fifteen question test. I give like half of that. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to talk. Today we're going to focus in on the integral test. Today is probably not quite as easy as it was before break. Okay. Um, that's that one. You have to fill. I'm assuming you have to fill in a little bit, right? Got it? Okay, you'll notice that there are only three examples today, right? And I left you lots of space. Okay? All right. Um, that means they're probably not short examples. Um, so, on here, we have to actually test a couple of things. So, we have to make sure that the hypothesis works in order for us to use the theorem, okay, or to use the test. So, um, and I gave you some some hints as to what that uh, what the theorem actually says. So this is kind of saying the same thing. It has to be positive, continuous, which they're all going to be continuous, and decreasing. Okay, so we have to check for two things. We have to check to make sure it's positive, and we have to check to make sure it's a decreasing series. Okay, if that works then we are allowed to use this is basically an improper integral okay then we can decide if it converges or diverges by using an improper integral but though but it has to be a positive decreasing series to work okay um the other thing we need to make note of from now on the only one where we can actually tell where it converges to is the geometric trick all the rest of them all we can say is converge or diverge and that's pretty much it Okay, so we can't tell where it converges to. All right, so we're going to use the integral test. We're going to start by checking out two things, okay? So I'm going to start by checking to see if it's a positive decreasing series. So I'm going to start for positive first, okay? Um, so in order to check for positive, um, I basically need to decide if when I put these numbers in, okay, if I ever get, looking at it, I didn't look at it very carefully. Oh, so we got to look, think about when I put a one in there, okay? If I put a one in there, is there any way it's ever going to go negative? No. If I put a two in, is there any way that it's going to go negative? And I want to start with thinking about whatever number's down here, okay? So there is no way, unless it was a negative number, and I'm never going to have negative ends, okay? 
there's no way it's ever going to go negative. So what we have to do is we have to make a statement. So we have to say for all x greater than or equal to 1, whatever the function is, okay, and I probably should have done this. I'm going to convert it to x's, okay? So I'm going to write it in our improper integral notation and put the x's in for the n's, okay? So we would say for all x greater than or equal to 1, x over x squared plus 1 is greater than 0 or is positive. That's the mathematical way to say it's positive. All right, the second thing we have to do is we have to prove that it is decreasing. Okay, I want you to think back to last year. Okay. So last year when we wanted to know if something was increasing or decreasing, where do we get that from? Not the second derivative, the first derivative. Okay, so I'm going to check out the first derivative and see if it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of the function. Okay, and this isn't, I'm, I'm going to fill two screens, just so you know, on your spacing. Okay? All right, so we got to use quotient rule, don't we? So, low d high, what's your low? Oh. x squared plus 1, derivative of high is what? 1. Okay, so I would just have a 1. Minus the high, which is x, derivative of low is 2x, all over the low squared. In order to find critical points, I would set that equal to 0. Okay. Um, let's see. The denominator would turn out to be, um, would go away when I set it equal to 0, right? So you've got x squared plus 1 minus... 2x squared? Make sure I'm doing it right. What's x squared minus 2x squared? Um, negative x squared. Negative x squared plus 1. So I'm looking for critical points. I'm going to move the 1 over. I'm going to divide by a negative. So x equals plus or minus 1. x squared would be here, right? There's an x squared there. We're not distributing oh, we're anything. Not doing the bottom? No, we're not doing the bottom. Because oh. I multiplied this by zero, right? Oh. And that makes it zero. <coughs> so it goes away. Okay, so my critical points are between our negative one and one. What's wrong? Uh, lost your x squared. Which x squared? The x goes equal to one and it just equals x square root. Square root. Okay. All right. So is negative 1 inside the interval we're working on? No. No. So all I have to test is something between 1 and infinity. Remember our, so put in a 10. Sounds good. Okay. Is that what you said, Kaylee? Yeah. All right. So I put in a 10. If I put a 10 into this function here, and I don't, I don't have it simplified very well, um, all the numerators are going to be positive, right, because it's squared. Aren't they all squared no matter what? So it, no matter what I put in, we're supposed to be showing decreasing, though. What happened? Oh, this number is going to be huge, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we have a big negative number. The bottom's always going to be positive, isn't it? Okay, so we have a big negative number here. So is that going to make it positive or negative? negative. It's going to make it negative. So we would say, therefore, f prime of x is less than 0. Have I done my integral test yet? Um, I haven't. All I've shown is that I can use the theorem. Okay, so I have shown positive and decreasing, so I know now that I can do my integral test to decide if it converges or diverges. So I'm going to go to the next screen. Okay. Everybody got what they need off this one? Okay, so here comes the next screen. Same thing. We're working with this integral. So we're going to use this improper integral to figure it out. So I'm just rewriting. All right, and then remember, improper integral says we take the limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of x over x squared plus 1 dx. All right, what do you think we're going to use to try to integrate that? I'm not going to do Lahopital. I could. I might be able to do Lahopital. I'm going to try to use a 
U substitution because what's the derivative of x squared? 2x dx. I don't have the 2, right? So I've got to move that over to get it in there. All right, so let's do our substitution in. 1 to b. Um, I have, what am I putting in for the x squared plus 1? U. U. And then for the x dx, I'm putting in 1 half du. Yeah, sure. Limit as b approaches infinity. So when we integrate 1 over u, what do we get? Natural log of u. Yep. Natural log of the absolute value of u from 1 to b. I'm going to go ahead, instead of writing u, I'm going to put in the x squared plus 1. All right, we're going to put in our b and our 1 next. So the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 half natural log of b squared plus 1 minus 1 half natural log of 1 squared plus 1. What's 1 squared plus 1? Two. 2. So I have minus 1 half natural log of 2. Because absolute value of 2 is going to be 2. When I put the infinity into this thing, what are you going to end up with? Infinity. infinity. So does this part here even matter? No. So when I get to infinity, does it converge or diverge? Diverges. Yeah, we did all that to get diverges. Don't just guess, because you'll inevitably guess wrong. Even though you have a 50-50 shot. Yeah. All right. We good with number one? Okay. Let's look at number two. And remember, this is just one of the tests. This one happens to be longer, okay, um, than some of the others. All right, so let's look at this one here. I'm going to start by converting it into our integral notation because we are going to use the integral test on it. So that's going to throw it back into x's. All right, two things I had to show. What were the two things I had to show? Positive and decreasing. OK, so I'm going to show my positive, And two, I'm going to show that it's decreasing. All right, so positive, first of all, is I got to think about it, basically. When I put a 1 into there, um, is it ever going to go negative? No. So I know that it's positive. I just have to make the statement for all x greater than or equal to 1. Hang on. I can see your hand. 1 over x squared plus 1 is greater than 0. Yes, Joaquin? So what if the numerator was x minus my So if it went negative, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Yeah, you can't use that test. Would that, would that happen on the test? On, on a test that I give you, unlikely. Okay. Now, is it possible on the AP test? Yeah. Do these questions come up very often for integral tests? Mm, maybe one question. And so that pro it's probably not going to happen. Okay. But it could be that it works for maybe we have to change that bottom number to maybe it works for nine and above, right? If that situation happened. Okay. So it could we could maybe alter it. We could say it work. It not where doesn't work for this, but we could alter it and make it work for another one. All right. Decreasing. Uh, means I need to take a derivative, right? So before I take a derivative, I'm going to rewrite that function as x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 power. All right, so let's take the derivative of it. So what do I have to do for the derivative? Where does this go? To the front. To the front. x squared plus 1 to the... What? Negative 2. We're subtracting 1 off the exponent. And then what rule do I still need? chain rule. So I get 2x for that. Okay. I'm going to rewrite it before I try to set it equal to 0. I've seen a negative 2x in the top and the x squared plus 1 squared in the bottom. Okay. What am, how do I get critical points? Set it equal to 0. Good. What's going to happen to the denominator? It's going to cancel, and I get negative 2x equals 0. So x equals what? 0. That's a critical point. Now, is that critical point in the interval? No. no. Technically, though, remember, there's another place to get critical points, isn't there? 
Yeah, don't I, can't I set the denominator equal to zero? Uh-oh, though, can I do that? Can I take the square root of negative one without going imaginary? No, so did that do me any good? But technically this one, I, if I, as long as I get one, I've got an interval, don't I? Couldn't I just check between one and infinity? Yeah, so if you didn't find your critical points and you shortcutted it by checking the interval that they give you, you could probably get away with that. I'm not saying to do that, but you could probably get away with it. Um, what number are we going to pick? Five. Five or ten. I like ten. I'm going to go into this right here. Okay? So, my denominator is always positive because we've got a squared. What about the numerator? Is it going to be positive or negative? negative? Negative. So, did I show decreasing? Yes. So, you have to state, therefore, f prime of x is less than zero. I'm not done yet, though, right? Okay? I still have to do the integral test part of it to decide if it converges or diverges. All right, we okay? Josue, you okay? Why did you solve for x on the numerator? Why did I solve for x in the numerator? Yeah. Because, so we're thinking back to last year, that gets us critical points when I set it equal to zero. Yeah. When I multiply this to the other side, it's zero. Right, so x, this squared term times zero is zero when I'm solving for x. Mm -hmm. so, I, so it ends up setting equal the numerator to zero. Okay. All right, let's look at the next part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do my improper integral. So 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared plus 1 dx equals, so i got to set it up as limit as b approaches infinity of 1 to b, 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. On your Chromebooks, if you've got your Chromebook up, you need to pull up your list of derivatives and integrals. Okay? So, so everybody hit that button of your derivatives and integrals on your Chromebook. Okay? You're going to probably want it for this problem. All right, we got it up. Do we know what it is? So get your little reference list out because you can integrate it just from the way it looks. All right, which one is it? Arctangent. It is arctangent. And it, so arctans, is it 1 over b out front? 1 over a. 1 over a, so your, but your a is this 1, right? So it would be 1. Uh -huh. Arctangent of what? Negative a squared x over 1. x over 1. And then from 1 to b. Okay, so we've got the limit as b approaches infinity of the arctangent of b minus the arctangent of 1. All right. What is, what is the arctangent of... So I got to put the infinity in, right? Arctangent of infinity minus arctangent of 1. What's the arctangent of infinity? It's pi over 2. We had learned that. Arctangent of 1 also works. No. It's pi over 4. Mm -hmm. So could you use your calculator to do it if you had to? Yeah. All right. Um, what is, so if I evaluated that, I almost don't need to because I know it's going to be a number, right? Yeah. Um, if I did evaluate it, I'd probably make that two-fourths so I know that it's one pi over four. That's not what it converges to, okay? It's just, we just know that it, it's a number, so we know that it converges. That's kind of confusing. I know. That's just the way it is. Your answer choice is going to be converges or diverges, though. Only on ge only on geometric, okay. It only works on geometric, okay. Other series, unfortunately, because they're infinite, right? We can only just tell if they do converge at some point or don't, okay. At least at what 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 we're doing for our level, okay. All right, I'm sure there's some computer out there that could tell you where it converges to. All right, one more. So last one, okay. 
Yes. Is it what? Example one and two the same? No. 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 One had an N on top and one had a one on top. Oh. There was a slight difference. Okay. Let's talk about this one. Okay. So. I'm going to convert it into R. Sorry. One to infinity, not one to B. Of X E to the negative X squared DX. Which, if you think about it, is really saying x over e to the x squared, right? Which, for derivative, I wouldn't know, but or wouldn't do. But for my trying to see if it's positive, that's probably a good thing to write it like that. So let's talk about it if it's positive. Um, so if I think about putting a one in there, well, putting a one in would make it one over e, wouldn't it? Yeah. Is it ever going to be a negative thing, number if I have one over e? No. So I'm going to say, so I have to make the statement for all x greater than or equal to 1, x over e to the x squared, sorry, is greater than 0. All right. And then the second thing I'm going to do is talk about decreasing. All right, so decreasing means I need to take the what? Derivative. derivative. Okay, we could do two things. We could use the product rule and use this, or we could use the quotient rule and do that. I'm going to go with the product rule and do this one, okay? So I'm going to keep the first. What's the derivative of the second? E to the negative x squared times negative 2x. Times negative 2x, right? So e to the negative x squared, and the chain rule gives me a negative 2x. Plus keep the second, which is the e to the negative x squared, what's the derivative of the first? One. Good. All right, I'm going to, to get critical points, set that equal to zero. zero. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of fancy work here. Okay, do you see the greatest common factor in there? Yeah, yeah let's pull that e out. So e to the negative x squared x times negative 2x would be negative 2x squared plus 1 when I factor out. All right, we're looking for critical points to make sure the critical points lay in the interval somewhere, okay? Um, so we've got e to the negative x squared equals 0 doing 0 product property, and e to the 2x plus 1 equals 0. Um, don't I start natural logging both sides? Because you've got to get rid of your e. Can we do the natural log of zero? I don't think it is. Double check in your calculator. Can we do the natural log of zero? I don't think it works. I think it's undefined. Natural log of one is zero. Did it work? It's undefined. Okay, so we, that runs us into a dead end, right? So that one doesn't work, but we can look here. So x squared equals 1 half. So x equals plus or minus square root of 1 half, whatever that is. So technically, is 1 to infinity inside that interval? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to check the 1 to infinity into this right here and make sure it goes to a positive, or so make sure it's negative. So 1 to infinity, I'm going to pick 10 again. Okay, so this right here, doesn't it really say it's the same as that, isn't it? So no matter what I do, isn't this first part going to always be positive? Yes. Yeah. So if I put a 10 in there, I get like negative 200 plus 1. So is that going to be positive or negative? Positive. Negative. Negative. So we'd say therefore f prime is less than zero, it's decreasing. So we've proven the first two things. Now we get to take our take our improper integral. This one is a good u sub and it's like a two liner after that, okay? All right, so we're gonna go with our improper integral, x e to the negative x squared dx. We're gonna switch that, convert that to a limit. 
as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of x e to the negative x squared dx. All right, I already gave it away. What's your u going to be for your u sub? Good, so du equals? Negative 2x. Good, and then I'm missing the 1 half. All right, I'm going to do a couple. Actually, I didn't finish this one last year, it looks like. That's why it looks like two lines. So limit as b approaches infinity. Um, so it's more than two lines. I lied. Um, e to the u, right? And for the x dx, I put in negative 1 half du. Yeah. All right, when we integrate e to the u, what do we get? E to the u. E to the u. So e to the negative x squared from 1 to b. All right, I'm putting in the b and the 1. So negative 1 half e to the negative b squared minus negative 1 half e to the negative 1, basically. When I put in the infinity, What's it going to go to? It'll probably go to negative infinity. So does it converge or diverge? Converge. Isn't it going to be, in, isn't that going to make this infinity? So it ends up diverging. See, don't guess. You get it wrong. So. This one isn't the only test, okay? And I know this one is harder. Tomorrow's is, is super easy, okay? So this one isn't used very often, but I figured it's better to come back and do the hard one first, right, and get that out of the way and do some of the easier ones next, okay? So the assignment is posted in Haiku. You have the whole rest of the period to work on that. There is also extra credit out there. That is, it's still out there. It's due by Thursday, right? So. And those points go towards tests. So find something productive to do. Okay, the last few minutes of class here. Thomas, thought for each question you get right, how much does it go towards tests? I think I said 10 points towards tests. So there's an opportunity to get, if you got 100% on it, to get. I don't know, two or three hundred points towards tests on top of what you already have. 